Hello, hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Em and in today's video I would love us to work a little bit more on the travel journal, uh, travel junk journal that we are actually making together. So if you have not seen part one of this process, I will link it below in the description box for you. But basically what we did in part one of this mini series is we created a cover from an old map uh, from a vintage atlas book that i have we did some collaging here there is a like a removable book plate um there is some stamps here is the back so if you have not seen the previous part uh, you may not know that i am making this journal particularly for one travel sort of one trip that i took um and this one was to malta malta is a an island at the uh, south of europe and it is right here so i specifically chose this map to um to have malta in it and yeah we have some lace on the spine to add some sturdiness to the spine the only thing we've discovered that i did off camera is I trimmed it just slightly so it was a bit wider I just trimmed it a little bit more and I stitched around not sure if you guys can see because I used a very kind of light cream thread but I stitched around with my sewing machine and so inside this is what it looks like our signature is not bound yet but we have tea stained fabric on the spine here to again protect the spine to make it stronger to make it last longer and then we've picked the pages so let me uh, quickly just show you the pages we cho chose I have a um, um, an old Polish photography book that I used a page from then this is um, just a notebook page some wrapping paper paper I really wanted this to have like an eclectic but vintage uh, junk journal style so this is a style of a journal that I was going for so we have a tea stained window envelope here and a, another map some coffee paper, grungy and crinkly. Uh, this is a beautiful Chinese receipt that was gifted to me. I have a flower book page to add some color and of course it wouldn't be a journal of mine if there was no flowers in it. Uh, this is again I believe a just a piece of wrapping paper, brown wrapping paper. This book page is from a manual uh, for or like instructions for typewriting I believe and I love the colors it has pink on one side and this really pretty minty green or teal on the other side then we have some um, vellum or tracing paper which has been inked around and then I believe yes this is the middle um, page so the middle page is this beautiful page from a an antique dictionary of gardening that i have and so of course we have our second halves of the same pages and i think i may arrange them a little bit more here so that um I like to, when I am creating my signatures, I really like to see all of the different sizes of papers um, kind of visible. So if I aligned, for instance, this book page and this piece together, uh, then you would not be able to see the nice variation here. But, you know, we have this nice like waterfall even uh, almost um, effect when we place them like that. Okay, so here it is and yeah so this is the this is what we made in part one and so today I definitely want to bind 
the signature into the cover and I am going to show you guys how I do it. And then I would like to, I think I would like to start making some ephemera. So I will show you guys when we are done with the signature, I will show you the real life like travel ephemera that I've collected on my trip, which I want to put in here. But I also want to make some pockets, maybe tax spots, maybe journaling cards that I can use in this journal when I am to kind of mix and match it with the real life ephemera if you know what I mean. Okay so I think I'm going to start with this with binding. So what we are going to need is a needle and um, a pair of scissors. Then I have this thread. I think this one. Yeah I think I'm going to use this one. This is a uh, linen this is linen thread basically and it's quite strong but you could use embroidery thread as well or maybe even baker's twine whatever is strong enough that you are not worried it will break and then we also need an awl this is an awl so this is like a pokey tool we are going to poke some holes into this and what i also really love to use is a book. I have this uh, very old and very much destroyed book. I uh, got it for next to nothing at, um, at some, you know, flea market, something like that. But basically what it helps me with is it helps me uh, make my holes because, you know, I, I can... Um, I, I go through the paper and then to the book and I am not making holes in my desk, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, and one more thing, one more thing is some paper clips. I should have a second one of those somewhere. But I don't know where. So anyway, paper clips to hold our pages together. And what I'm going to do is I am going to align all of my pages and my cover together. This is the way I always do it with a single signature journal. So I just make sure again that the pages are positioned the way I like them. That you can see all of the different sizes, all of the different... Um, lengths and widths <laughs> and now i am taking oops, excuse me i am taking the paper clip and i am clipping those so definitely it would be easier with the with the bulldog clip if i had two of those but i think i can i can make it work with this with this uh, paper clip as well yep okay so this will hold my pages together uh, now I can just see if nothing is kind of um, um, what's the word oh what's the word I'm looking for uh, nothing is kind of overhanging the cover I can move it this is the the time to make some last minute adjustment and I think it's it's okay this is a junk journal after all so it certainly does not have to be perfect okay I think I like it so now what I'm going to do is I am placing this on my book. I am taking my all and I am going to eye, to be eyeballing it. I want to make three holes going all the way through all the pages and the cover. So one in the middle-ish, one um, below that and then one above that. 
and uh, what I want to make sure with uh, with those three holes is that when I have small pages in my journals and you guys um, could see that I do in fact have some really small pages like this this uh, receipt here I want to make sure that at least one hole goes through each one of those papers small and big alike so that none of them are loose and none of them I am going to um, you know are going to fall out because they are not bound okay and so now I am taking my thread and I usually take about three lengths of my spine so one two and three I prefer to have more um, just to be on the safe side it's probably too much but you know better this way I believe and even if it is too much and I am going to um, end up with some some threads that I then cut off I am still going to use them for something else okay so I threaded my um, my thread through the needle and now we are going uh, from the inside through the middle hole and I am leaving a fair amount of this hanging here and then we are going through the um, through the top top um, hole and I want to make sure I am actually going through all of the pages now of course you can do a thing a thousand times and have no problems and then the moment you start filming it um, you are going to struggle so then we are going all the way down to the bottom hole and then back through the middle one so this one is the tricky part because of course we already have a thread here so I just want to make sure that my needle is not going kind of through the thread that's already there but other than that it's as simple as that now I am going to have one of those loose threads on um, each side of this one going through the middle here and this is the part when I want to make sure that this is all nice and tight so you can see here where our threads are I don't want them to be too kind of floppy and loose I can now unclip this and see how it looks here if uh, if it's aligning nicely with the spine you don't want to pull too hard on um, on those strings especially if you have like me some kind of more thin and brittle papers you don't want to tear through them but other than that you just make a double knot here and you can either trim those really short or what I like to do is I make a bow like that because I like the look of it and then I trim those long ends like that and here is our journal bound and I'm telling you guys I have been making journals for over three years now and this is and this has always been my favorite part and this is flipping through a bound journal I don't know what it is but a journal never feels as well in my hands when I have you know all of the pages loose and I'm still working on them and decorating them but the moment I bind them and I have this in like a notebook book format it's just oh, it's so pleasing it's so so nice so not not that hard I hope I hope I I hope I showed you guys <clears throat> uh, how to do it and it wasn't too chaotic so now what what would I like to do now with this journal I'm actually thinking of having a pocket either on the front or the back I could of course have 
uh, have a pocket on both sides here but how about yeah maybe we will have two pockets so one on the back I would think would be at first when I'm still working in this journal I would put all of the ephemera that I want to later put somewhere on the pages I would put them in this pocket <clears throat> and then when I'm done decorating this journal I think I would leave this pocket here as kind of like a place for extra photos things like that things I just don't have space uh, for uh, in those pages while the front I was thinking maybe kind of like a library type pocket for the front because then what I was thinking of doing with this is I would add a journaling card here I would add a journaling card in here and I would kind of write um, a little introduction sort of so maybe the dates when we were on the trip uh, some general thoughts and uh, yeah kind of like an introduction to this trip all right so I'm actually thinking that I would like to have let me see so I have some ephemera here in this box and I was very, very kindly gifted some beautiful Tim Holtz cards. And how about I use a couple of those as like the basis of this pocket. So this was this would be the bag. This is just, you know, a random one I chose. What's fun about those Tim Holtz cards is that they are all different um, lengths uh, but as you can see I can um, like easily pair them together because they are the same width and create a very easy pocket so maybe something like that let me check um, we also have, have something like this so maybe actually I would have one this size paired with one of this size and then I could actually use a journaling card made uh, out of something like this. Or maybe we will just create a tag on our own, something like that. So let's let's see. Now, I because I'm going to be making um, this pocket this way, I don't want something, I don't want to pick a card where I do not want to cover uh, the the bottom side here um, so perhaps I will just look for ones that maybe the um, the bottom size is not as interesting and I would not be um, mad about covering it up I also kind of want to make sure that they go together with what we already have here Oh, I really like this one. So this is an option. I like this one too with the yellow. It picks the colors of the um, of the map really nicely. Then we have an actual map. But maybe that's maybe that's a little bit too much. I like this one as well. Well, I like all of them to be honest. Again, I'm just looking for ones that go well with the colors and that I would not be too sad about covering the bottom part. Okay, so how about we now try to find a card. Okay now right i just wanted to make sure i would not be sad about covering the back either because i am going to attach it here also you guys because this um front cover is just paper and it's actually a vintage paper it's not very sturdy it's it's just a single single sheet of paper adding some scrapbooking cardstock or cardstock in general or something thicker like 
a card um, is going to add a little bit more sturdiness to this cover so this is this is kind of why I, I like it alrighty so well this is quite nice so now I just want to find a card Ooh, how about this I like this because both of these they kind of look like one um, the yellow goes nicely with the yellow here the blue of course we have the blue in the map I love the the tape so I think a lot of them are going to going to look really well here so I'm not even sure if I want to keep looking through these because there's probably much more <laughs> or many more than just one card that could look great here yeah I think I think I am actually loving this so let's go with this Mm -hmm. I'm going to put these away as well as as well as these. So this is just the box where I keep my medium to large ephemera and this is mostly paper cards. I have some beautiful paint swatches that were gifted to me, some ladies here, some notebooks, stuff like that. Those cute little uh, notebooks that are perfect to add little journaling spots to, to your pages. Okay, so how do I want it? First, I'm thinking I want to I think I want to make like an indent here so that we can clearly see that this is a pocket or m more clearly at least and I'm going to use this circle punch I believe this is an inch and a half circle and I am just going to punch out just a tiny bit like that and it gives me a nice nice shape so next I'm thinking I will ink around both of those and then I am definitely going to want to decorate the front here a little bit and I'm actually, maybe I will actually put like a flower somewhere here in the back, kind of coming out of the pocket, something like that. Maybe I will do it. We will see. So I hope everyone is doing all right. Um, I think I have not made any videos last week. Um, I was busy with some other works. I was making some printables for Patreons, packing uh, my journals and sending them to customers. I was making some freebies for my wonderful customers. Also, I, I'm not sure if Heather, uh, Heather, who bought one of my journals, if you are watching this, would you be so kind to please contact me um, on Etsy or via email? My email is in the description box. I've messaged you. Um, I sent you a couple of messages um, regarding some information that I really, really need to have before I can ship your journal. And um, if you're watching this, please, please contact me because I cannot uh, send uh, out your journal with the courier if I have if I don't have those information or this information from you so anyway um, what do I do now I'm thinking I am going to do I want a flower let me see this video seems a little bit uh, all over the place then I am sorry you guys but 
It's been so hot here in Poland, so hot, and I don't function well in heat. And I mentioned it a few times, but when it's hot um, outside, our apartment just heats up so easily and it's it's hard to live here <laughs> it's, it's hard to live here uh, so um, i have a fan going a ceiling fan i hope oh i love it i think i'm going to i'm going to add those um, i hope it's not like it's not disturbing you guys um, it's on a on a kind of like lowest um, setting, so I hope. Oh, I really like it. So I hope it's it's not too bad. I hope you can't hear it. But yeah, it's it's really hot, and I am just a little bit tired <laughs> of it. So so yeah. But all in all, everything is well here at, at my household with my little family. We are getting by. I have actually been thinking a lot about filming content uh, here on YouTube and also on Patreon. And okay, so this is like a random chat time. <laughs> So I hope I hope you don't mind but uh, if you are new here then you may not know that a year ago I resigned from my corporate job um, February 2021 was actually my my last month at that company and since then I have been working on my own uh, creative business which has been absolutely incredible absolutely incredible and I am grateful for that every single day um, I did have to though I did have to do a lot of adjusting because you know after I, I finished university I went to work at that company and I have been working kind of in in that type of a job for five years over a little bit over five years even uh, before I made the switch and so some things were not that easy for me to adjust to and one of those is kind of the lack of a routine and uh, like the the hmm, what am I trying to say the lack of a routine the lack of kind of someone telling you what to do which is one of the best things of course in my job I am loving being my own boss but it's also not that easy and so this feeling when you wake up in the morning and you actually don't know what to do because you haven't planned the day you know it's it's something that I'm I'm really I'm really trying to um, to to figure out how how to go about my days because in in a corporate job there's never a problem like that. You start your work day and you immediately want uh, know what you are going to work on this day, or if you don't, then someone is going to to tell you what to do. Okay, just a brief uh, break. Here is uh, a little box in which I keep those stamp uh, scraps that I showed you guys last time. And I think I would like to decorate this, this a little bit with some of those. So anyway, yes, the lack of a routine. And you would think, well, aren't you running a creative business aren't creatives kind of supposed to be go with the flow and and um, you know no routine <laughs> and stuff like that and I mean yes and no I think everyone is different and for me I like to be organized I like to know I, I love to do lists for instance and um, I find that when I don't know what to do I mean, look at this. 
super cute stamp you guys isn't this the cutest thing i think i want to use it here <laughs> uh, so when i don't know what to do i i struggle i i get anxious this is just some vellum paper which i um cr scrunched up and i think i may want to maybe use a piece of this here Mm -hmm. so yes i promise this has a point <laughs> this story has a point and the point is that i've been thinking a lot about creating small routines in my work life and of course it's not super easy because a lot of my work is creative work and you kind of can't or i can't i find that i can't schedule my creativity in a sense that i can't tell myself well today um you are going to make a journal <laughs> um because maybe i won't maybe i don't feel creative at all or maybe i feel creative in uh, something else maybe i feel creative um towards something digital maybe i want to work on some digitals instead so um but i do want to try some small routines um meaning uh for example i would like to really uh, kind of make a filming or rather uploading video uploading routine for both youtube and patreon i've I've never actually tried it. I think I've never actually really tried making it a like a routine where I have uh, days, like specific days when I post. Um, and I think it might be good for me. So my idea is, okay, I think I want to add something more to it. So I'm just, I will just keep looking while chatting uh, to you guys. So my idea would be to to perhaps um, post videos like I would have two videos on YouTube per week and if I were was able to I would post a third one as well and then I would also have a schedule for Patreon so if you don't know i also have a patreon account where you can follow me for some more content if you are interested there is always some um patreon exclusive uh videos and projects and stuff there but basically my idea is i will post new videos on youtube on mondays and wednesdays um at 5 p.m. Uh, Central European summer time, basically 5 p.m. my time. So this should be morning or kind of midday in the US, depending on where you are. And um, in in Europe, it's it's obviously going to be the same time. And I think in Asia, and I think also in Australia, this would be like at night. So you guys would have a new video the next day when you wake up, something like that. I think that would be sustainable for me. It's it's a good time uh, for me because I even if I film on the same day, which I do most of the days, I still have time to edit, to upload it to YouTube and stuff like that. So that's that's my idea for YouTube. Okay, I really love uh, how this is turning out. I think I want to use some gold paste. Um, this is just gilding wax that I got online to maybe accentuate this part a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, so for YouTube, uh, that would be two videos per week for sure. I mean, this is just, I'm going to try it, you know. You never know uh, till you try, right? Uh, but two videos per week. And if I have time, um, then I will also uh, post or upload a video on Saturday. 
so some Saturdays there might be an extra extra video also uh, I think I want, I want to add some uh, gold splatters as well to it so yeah so two to three videos uh, per week on YouTube and when it comes to Patreon I think um, well I could do the same so pick uh, some other days but I think I'm just going to try to take a page from a fellow YouTuber who I have admired and followed. I, I have been following her for, for a long time now and that's Adele from Inky Quill. And so what she does on her Patreon is she posts new videos every 1st, 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th, 20 fifth and 30th i believe day of each month so no matter uh, no matter how um, or which day of the week it is uh, there is a video on the first fifth and so on and i think it's it's a nice uh nice idea i for patreon like if I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I just want to try some new things. So sorry if I'm rambling and sorry if <laughs> if you're like completely not interested interested in this uh, behind the scenes chat. But I just want to, you know, I just want to be real with you guys and share a little bit of my struggles and kind of what ways I am going to um, to try to improve uh, what's not working for me at the moment. So that's that would be the plan and th this would give um, again at least so we would have 1st, 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th, 25th and 30th so at least seven videos per month to Patreon uh, all of them are again Patreon exclusive um, content so some projects which I only share there in addition to those videos uh, that I have um, planned for YouTube so yeah I don't know. I I am going to try it, I think. I am going to test it out. I think having a routine and having a schedule will be really good for me because it helps my brain to calm down, you know? When I know when to post, when to create something, when to film, when to do this, when to do that, I am immediately calmer and less anxious uh, than when I just have this whole blank week ahead of me and I have no idea what to do. So we will see today when I'm filming this, it's Monday. So we are starting today, Monday. And um, okay, I really love this pocket. I really love it. I'm thinking maybe I will um, go around with my sewing machine. I think I will. Um, so to just end this thought, uh, we are starting today. Today is, uh, I think it's the 20th. So that would mean a video for Patreon as well. And then the next one for YouTube will be on Wednesday and for Patreon will be on the 25th, whichever day of the week that is. And they will be posted at 5 p.m. Uh, well, not today's ones. Uh, not today's ones. Maybe I will actually pick a little bit of an um, kind of later time um, because like today it was so hot in the morning <laughs> that I really had to wait till a bit later to film the videos. So uh, it's probably not going to be up on uh, at 5 p.m. but I will like I will test it out and I will see about the time um, kind of in practice. Okay so the story uh, and the rambling is is over I think. Um, 
please let me know what you guys think um, I think also maybe for you um, to know when I'm going to be posting maybe it would be easier um, so that uh, you know Monday and Wednesday you get a video from me at this and that time whatever time you know I, I settle on and then for patrons um, on patreon you know you know that there will be a new video on the 25th and the 30th and uh, stuff like that I think so I, I like I like it as as a viewer uh, of YouTube channels I like it when creators do this um, and I'm always kind of excited when the day comes when I know they are going to be posting um, and I am there <laughs> when they post which also helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps the their channel grow so the more people watch your video in the first 24 hours of its release the more uh, kind of the algorithm gets you know interested and and the algorithm um, can gets the information that people like people are, are liking this particular video so let me know what you think about it uh, Mondays Wednesdays and um, perhaps Sundays uh, on some weeks for YouTube and then this first fifth tenth and so on for Patreon um, again I really like a routine it works well with my brain but for now let me pause the video just for a second I am going to go around here with my sewing machine uh, just for the look of it and then I will be back in just a sec okay so we are now going to attach it I really love how it looks here um, I love this um, what's this doing here <laughs> i love this um kind of uh, junk journaly look to it um something that i've started doing recently in my own junk journals and that maybe you guys uh, would like to try is taking a piece of vellum or tracing paper and um kind of doing this i i totally forgot the word but you can see doing this then straightening it up and what it does it first of all it creates this like kind of constellation pattern not sure if you can see hopefully the camera is picking it up but it's so gorgeous and it also makes it so nice and crinkly and i used a piece of it here and i really really love how it looks maybe let me show you guys up close how this pocket turned out we are now going to attach it I mean, those little boars are the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so sweet. Okay, so now I think um, because, again, this is on thin paper, I'm going to be attaching it to thin paper. I am going to use double-sided tape and not wet glue. So you can... Um, create an additional pocket so we have a pocket here of course but you could create an additional pocket in the back if you just glued those three sides but i think i don't want to do it um, i just want this one pocket uh, for the front we are going to have more pockets kind of inside the journal um, so i don't need i don't need this one Okay. Mm -hmm. and let's attach it <clears throat> and then we can think about the tag or card card uh, that is going to go there. And I think here yep. Let me close this up, make sure this is stuck all the way. <clears throat> okay, now it already makes the cover that much sturdier, so I really like it. And of course, it's a nice decoration for the front here. So now for the card, um, what do I want to use? What do I like? To use something like this then 
if it was of course I would need to make it thinner but just size wise I'm wondering whether I would like it to be as tall as this so in this case I would use one of those bigger cards um, <clears throat> or smaller like this so I would see some of the flowers I don't know maybe I will take the bigger one but again I would like to choose one which hmm, the story begins huh oh no because I'm going to have to make it thinner so I would probably cut away a little bit of that but do we have any of those cards that would work well for journaling so and i think i would like to to make sure two sides uh, if i want to write more uh, i would have i would like to have two sides for journaling or maybe maybe just this I quite like this and then we have a lot of space here on this side okay this is an option I really like those cards I before I was gifted this I've been meaning to get them uh, for myself because you get so many in one pack and um, they're just really good quality and of course if you like Tim Holtz designs, I like this too. If you like Tim Holtz designs then you know what more you can want <laughs> actually. Now I'm wondering because this one works well as well with this green. I like the green and this gives me beautiful lines for journaling here or maybe this one <clears throat> much lighter but then uh, we have the pink which goes nicely with the flowers so that would be also a nice option yeah I think and then we have pink for journaling. I think I'm going to go with this one. So now because it's the same size as my back here, it's too big for this pocket. So I am going to take my paper cutter and I am going to make it thinner by just trimming both sides this way i am also getting rid of the rounded edge um, but i can add it later if i want to with with a um, corner punch and then here and we will see in a moment or check in a moment if this is enough and then perhaps slightly from from the bottom I think we might need to trim a little bit more although well it it's a um, it fits there snugly but maybe maybe just a little bit more to be on the safe side okay To decide if I wanted this tall or whether I think I'm going to trim it something like that <clears throat> so that when I put it inside yes I can still see a little bit here I really like it okay 
Um, but that's not all that I would like to do with this. So first of all, we could actually make it into a tag. And I think I'd like that. So I'm going to cut one corner and then use this little triangle as a template for the second corner. And we have a cute little tag. Then do I actually want to use something here? Maybe just something like that. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. So this is um, from Tim Holtz dyes, the wildflower dyes. Um, I used them on some pink cardstock and I have some greens, <clears throat> green ones as well. And I have some uh, watercolor, watercolored ones as well. No, I think this is perfect actually. So because our pocket is so decorated, I think I would like to keep this card simpler. And then perhaps just for, for the sake of like keeping everything cohesive, maybe I will find a scrap stamp or stamp scrap that would work on this card as well. I think I want it here. It's nice because it's not like a focal point, not really. I think it blends quite nicely in this collaged background and just adds, adds a layer to it, a layer of interest. Okay, then let me go around with my vintage photo. Oops, excuse me. also want to add something to this tag so let me punch a hole and let's see here I have an eyelet maybe we can find a bit of maybe eyelash trim or, or some kind of a ribbon go into through this eyelet. Yeah. And then we can just tie it like that. Clean clean this edge. Trim this one. And here is our tag. It's so simple, so cute. And let's see how it looks in the pocket. I will be adding the journaling uh, off camera, but for now I just want to see how it looks when it fits here. And I love it. It's so sweet. It's so sweet with the um, pink mm, uh, die cut and all of that. And when we take it off, it's also just 
beautiful okay so i think that that's it for today i'm not sure for how long uh, i've been filming uh, actually but in the next video i would definitely like to make a pocket for the bag and i think this one will be an altered junk mail envelope and then maybe we can start decorating the the inside oh and i wanted to show you guys uh, just very quickly all the different ephemera pieces that i got while traveling so maybe this will give you some idea what you can hold on to when you are traveling yourself if you would like to um, make a travel journal afterwards so this is just some coupon uh, discount coupon for um, this um, for what's it called a aquarium um, which we actually didn't go to but um, we lived near it when we were in Malta so I I kept it it's a nice um, nice piece of ephemera it's also uh, blank on the back oh it's an I, it's actually stamped with uh, the Mayflower Hotel where we stayed in St. Paul's Bay um, yeah <laughs> so a nice space for journaling this is a ticket uh, from a cathedral that we went to um, blue grotto boat service so this is from when we were um, kind of sailing on those little boats um, through some um, kind of like caves on the water this was so beautiful uh, and this i believe is just just a leaflet of all the uh, things that you can do on camino which is one of the islands uh, of malta and oh here it is so this is malta the main island and here is camino uh, so we were there as well then i Think I have a couple of maps, uh, city maps. This is Valletta, the capital city of Malta, and on the back, this is a um, like a bird eyed view of Malta. Uh, Gozo. This is, um, if I am not mistaken, the second biggest island uh, that is included in the Malta archipelago um, and then here is Comino so this is that and this one is from Medina which is uh, the old capital city of um, of Malta and a stunning stunning place and then this is uh, a little um, like booklet from the hotel where you were and we um, this was like our uh, where our key cards were and um, you know I thought why don't I just use it um, take it and use it in my a journal as a nice tax spot pocket booklet whatever <laughs> then i have some plane tickets um from malta and um going to and from malta this is a like this strip that they attach to your luggage uh, on the airport what is this lifting services gozo <laughs> uh, so yeah so this is this was the ticket to gozo which was this uh, second biggest island and this i believe is a note from um our hotel so we got this at our, ho at our hotel with just some rules and then some uh, information for us so those are the things i also have photos i have not printed them yet so yes i have a lot of photos to kind of look through and and print so i will be doing that because i also definitely want to include photos in my journal um but yeah those are all of the things that i have and um thank you so much for crafting with me today you guys i hope you enjoyed this um next kind of iteration of our little vintage travel junk journal series here on my channel and uh, we are going to be working on this journal more together very very soon and um 
yeah let me know please in the comments what you think of the videos video schedule thing uh would that work for you um i think it will work for me i think i would like to try it but i also would like to hear your feedback on that and yeah thank you so much for spending your time with me today and i will see you guys very very soon in the next video bye